Well, as Christians, we're well aware of the chaos that can sometimes invade our lives. However, we often forget that those shepherding the flock can face troubling times as well. And Pastor Jensen Franklin is sharing his hope in light of hurtful and trying times. Jensen Franklin is a New York Times bestselling author and the pastor of Free Chapel Church in Gainesville, Georgia. When his oldest daughter began to stray in college, there was constant friction and life behind closed doors was like a war zone. In his book, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt, Jensen shares glimpses of the tests and struggles in his life and offers four ways he found to love, even in the midst of difficult circumstances. Well, Jensen, you join us now. What, what was it like? As I understand it, your daughter was just a model child growing up. Yeah, we, my wife and I have been married 30 years. We have five children four daughters and then a son born in that order. And we were the picture perfect family. And uh, you know, there, there is a unseen pressure of being a pastor. And, you know, we have six campuses and a lot of people and on television, but we were the picture perfect family. And then she went off to college and same old story, just did what, what some of us did. I did it and lived the party life, made some wrong choices, wrong people. But she got in deep, and we knew something was wrong. I'll never forget one, one day I was preparing to preach and had about 30 minutes. And my wife burst into my office, and she was in tears. And she said, I guess it's that, that uh, whim, whim, a woman's intuition to know something. Was, we had to do something. She said, we've got to go get her. And she was absolutely right. So we drove up to the school and brought her home. It was tears and she was ready to come home. She, she wanted, we, we, we might have saved her life bringing her home. And we thought things would, you know, we're on the road to recovery, but it got worse. It got darker and she ran away. And to make a long story short, it devastated our family and it devastated the siblings and our, our home dynamic changed. There was a lot of arguments, a lot of and, you know, we decided this was 10 years ago. My wife and I just decided to talk about it because we, I, mean, I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time, Gordon. You know, something's happened in our family and we just don't get along. We don't speak anymore, live in the same town. You got relatives across the city there that you never even talk to, never have a meal with. There's a sickness in the body of Christ. There's something wrong with Christians that we can't, we can't get beyond our conflicts and our hurts and our offenses. It, with your daughter, there was a sort of defining text that she sent. What, what was that? Yeah, she had ran away from home, and, uh, and she sent a text and, and said, Mom and Dad, I'm married. I got married today. A justice of the peace married us. And as a minister, you know, as a preacher, uh, that was devastating to me, to her mother. Um, we were broken. And um, the next week, I had a, few, a wedding and it was one of her mm. friends. And I watched the father walk that daughter down and give her away, and it devastated me. It was everything I could do to, to hold it together. And it began a, uh, a bitterness in me. The book is not about that. I think the story of my daughter is about two pages. The rest mm -hmm. is what happened to me, how that affected Aunt Charisse and how it, it affected our marriage and how it affected the other siblings who we had other challenges with, with some of the kids. And the bottom line of, of, of what begin, we began to experience is I, I, I realized that something has changed. I was bitter. I was mad. I was angry. I was, I was easily set off. That was not, that's not even who I am. Some people who know me, and I'll tell you when it all came to a head is, is, uh, one of one of her sisters was in a big argument with this daughter when when things were at its worst, and they were screaming at one another. and And she said, "I hate what you have done to our daddy. I hate how mm. you changed him. I hate how he doesn't laugh and he's not fun like he was when we were coming up." Because and you know and and then it, then I realized she didn't do that. I let the enemy do that to me. I have offense. I have bitterness. I have anger inside of me. And, and that began, uh, I heard this phrase called love like you've never been hurt. 
Mm -hmm. And I thought, I don't know why, but it had such an attraction to me. It actually came from a, uh, uh, they, they, they're not completely sure, but they think Satchel Paige, I don't know if you know that name. I know that name, But he yeah. was the first African-American pitcher during racist times, you know, uh, sports were segregated. He was the first African-American pitcher in the professional baseball. He's in the Hall of Fame. But they would hurl racial insults, the racists would, from the stands. And a reporter stuck a microphone after his first game and said, uh, said How did, what, what are you going to do about that? And he said, I'm going to love like I've never been hurt. And then I got to see, and you know, that's exactly what Joseph did. That's exactly when he, you know, when his family hurt him and broke, you know, went through everything, falsely accused, offended. He, he loved like he had never been hurt. It's exactly what Jesus did. It, it's easy to say that. Yeah. And I see the attraction. Well, oh, there's on. a process to it. Yes, it is. So what was the process for you? That's so, that's, that's so true. And, and, you know, that that's the biggest thing that I want people to take away from the book that, that sometimes it's not instant. Sometimes I, you hear this cr phrase, forgive and forget. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I, does forgiveness mean you get amnesia? How do I forget? How do I forget if somebody abused one of my children? How do I forget if, 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 a, if a spouse walked off and left you with three kids and a bunch of bills and they're having the time of their life and you're, you're, you're going through hell? How, how, do I, how do I forget that somebody stole hundreds of thousands of dollars in a business deal? It's not that you forget. You remember it differently. It actually becomes a point of reference of how far God, by His grace and His work in your life, has taken you. And you, it's, it's, I, I, look at, I look at how God has helped us, and now my daughters, all of them are serving the Lord in full-time ministry. The, the battle I had was with the son-in-law. Hmm. It was, and, and here's the honest truth. I wish it, I could say it was some service and tears flowed and we hugged and kissed. But the truth is, it's still to this day, they're, 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 if I allow it, that stuff can come up in you. And so, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I give an illustration in the book about the old ketchup bottles, the vintage ketchup glass bottles. Now they have the squeezable plastic Heinz 57. And if you want it, you just squeeze it and it comes out. But that's not, that's not how forgiveness is sometimes, especially when you've really been hurt. It's more like the old glass bottles. And you know, the you number get, you 50. You get really hard. Yeah. I, I used to stab it with, with, with <laughs> you know. But, but here's something you'll find out if you go to Heinz.com. Mm. I didn't know this. They said only 11% of ketchup users know this that the reason that they have the number 57 on the Heinz 57 ketchup bottle is it was strategically designed, the, the bottle was, that if you will tap where the 57 is, it will bring the quickest release of the contents. And if you've ever done that, you know it's it just it's a slow process. That's how forgiveness is. You get open. First step is to get open. I'm open to reconciliation. And I remember some of those first meals with my family it was tight, it was tense, it was awkward, it was holiday, you know, you, you just get through it and, and do the but, tap, tap, you, you ask and you keep on asking, pray and keep on, and little by little those gushes of forgiveness, those gushes of love and reconciliation begin to happen. And I believe that's what God wants to do in millions of people's homes and families. I agree. I believe yeah. he wants to He's restore us for reconciliation. Yeah, and, and it's got to start with me. Yeah. At some point, it doesn't even matter who's right and who's wrong. At some point, you have to separate the action from the person. I, I, I don't. When I say I forgive, it doesn't mean that that I agree. What you what you did may have been wrong. You it, it, there's no defending it. But I can separate the person from the action because that's what Jesus does for you. And he does for me every day of our life. He, he says, I forgive. And now he says, turn around and love like you've never been hurt. Amen. Amen. Jensen's book is called Love Like You've Never Been Hurt, Hope, Healing, and the Power of an Open Heart. And I think this is a universal. I think all of us go through this uh, and realizing that love comes from a place where you're in him. Uh, that's what releases it. I encourage you to get it. It's available where, wherever books are sold. And thank you for thank being with so us. Thank you so much. Yes. Great to yeah. be with you. All right. Terry, over to you.